My name is Dr. Ting from Health Stats. Today I'm going to talk to you about a very interesting phenomenon. It's called pulse wave, the arterial pulse wave. We have to understand how the body generates a pulse wave. And generally what happens is the heart pumps and pushes out blood. When the heart pumps, it generates a pulse wave, which is a contour wave that travels along the arterial tree. The waveform is actually generated here and it goes right down to the big aorta and it's reflected back when the big aorta bifurcates or divides into two arteries. So the speed at which the reflector wave comes back is in fact very important. So if we were to look at a person who is about 25 years old, when he generates a pulse wave from the heart, the wave will travel down, it hits the bifurcation and it comes back to the diastolic phase. You see when the heart pumps blood during the systolic phase, which is called systole, when the heart rests, it's called a diastole. Unlike the rest of the body, the heart only gets its blood during diastole, when the heart rests. When the heart is pumping, the whole body gets its blood, except the heart, because it's pumping. It cannot allow blood to flow through the muscle. So for a good heart function, what the heart should do is to spend the least amount of time pumping and the maximum amount of time resting, which is ideal. But when you are about 40 years old, the vessels get a little bit stiff. When the heart pumps, the wave travels a little too fast. It comes back a little too fast and it actually enters into the systole. So what you get is actually a wave and extra load for the heart to actually fight. So you are fighting your oncoming wave. Does the person feel anything? The answer is no. Now if you were to look at an 80-year-old, you actually see a very stiff artery and when the heart pumps, the wave travels so fast, it comes back right at you at the systole. So what you end up with is the wave goes up and then it is augmented or increased by the reflected wave and you spend about two-thirds of the time overcoming the wave. One little third of the time resting and getting the blood. The heart works harder, the heart rests shorter, and the heart has little time to get its own blood supply. And all this means that the heart will fail, the body is likely to get a stroke, and that is the understanding of what is important for a pulse wave. Not only we know that as we age, the waveform changes, or so-called the reflected wave changes. There is such a condition called central aortic pressure, which is the pressure at the root of the heart. The pressure at which when the heart pumps, the blood comes out. Now this central aortic pressure is very closely related to the stiffness of the artery. When we look at a person who is young and you measure the blood pressure at the brachial artery, you actually find that the brachial pressure is very different and actually significantly higher than the central pressure. It can be as big as 30 millimeters per curie. But when we grow older, the brachial pressure and the central pressure comes closer. We also mean that the vessels get stiffer. And what is the significance of having central aortic pressure that is higher? There are big studies like the CAFE studies, the REASON study. All these studies have shown that different drugs can affect the central pressure differently. For example, in CAFE study, we have two groups of 2,000 over patients follow up for the next five years on the same blood pressure level they have been kept for five years you're almost identical and they are matched for age, for sex, for everything else. But at the end of five years, the group that is treated with a certain drug called beta blockers, 
has 23% more stroke and 30% more diabetics as compared to the second group. There was nothing you can find that can tell between the two if you were to look at the statistics on the surface until Professor Brian William, who is the author of CAFE, this is true. The central pressure is the one that you have to monitor, not the brachial pressure. So how does one measure the central pressure? If you measure the central pressure at this moment, if you want to be accurate, you have to go through a very invasive method which is completely impractical. You cannot be subjecting everybody to such an invasive method. Well, you have other methods that come from a fairly bulky machine that has a sensor that looks like a chopstick that takes a little while, more than half an hour just to figure out. And it is not only bulky but very expensive. This is where HealthStat comes in. We call Bpro and a patented FDA approved software which will calculate the central aortic pressure very accurately. This has been validated over more than 10,000 patient waveform. Uh, we have done a comparison between the gold standard now and our central pressure and the accuracy is as close as 0.996. You, can you imagine at 10,000 patient waveform, we can get that kind of close accuracy. Now, when we did that invasive method using a protocol written by Professor Brian William, he used a invasive method, a catheter, and he put it at the root of the aorta, and we put the B-Pro on the hand of the patient undergoing angiogram. And for every wave, we continuously follow wave for wave. We measure the central pressure here and we read off the central pressure as calculated by the Ape House. We have 2,000 patient waveform and the accuracy was 0 0.9917, which is unbelievable. If you were to look at the waveform, and you look at that stiffening that's happening there. By choosing the correct drugs, you can see the reversal of the waveform. If we reverse all that, we are three steps ahead of the disease. We are able to avoid a stroke or a heart attack. And we are able to ensure we give the best for the patient.